This is a quick tutorial on how to use Photoshop. So with Photoshop, we're going to be looking at um, just some general things. So here is your work area or your workspace. So when it's talking about clicking your workspace or your, your artboard, this is what they're talking about. Off to the side is the toolbar. And something to know about the toolbar, if you click these two little arrows right here, it either makes it a single file, click it again, doubles it up, also, there's little arrows right here that indicate that there's more tools underneath. And you can see when I mouse over, it gives me the name of the tool. So I can go ahead and click on it, and I can see that there's more tools under there. So for this one, let's say I want to use the Quick Selection tool. I click on the Quick Selection tool. It gives me the name of the tool. I drop the arrow down, and I see that there's also the magic wand under there. All right. The other thing you want to be aware of is windows. With the window, we have all these panels that we can open and close to make our workspace more effective for us. You typically always have your layers open because we use layers a lot with Photoshop. So you have your layers open. If you're going to create a new document, go to File, New. And you can change it to, a lot of times it'll, it'll default as pixels. You can change it to inches. And I'm just going to leave this one as 8 by 8 You can change the, the color mode. You can make it grayscale or CMYK or RGB. Typically, it defaults to RGB, which is just fine for what we're going to be doing. And then I usually just leave everything the way it is, leaving it at 72 uh, resolution, and just say OK. And now we have a blank screen to be working with. If you look over here on layers, you can see that we have a background layer. And the background layer is locked. You can lock and unlock your layers. When you lock them, it, you can't make alterations to them. So if you wanted to change this, you would just simply click on the lock, and now it becomes any other layer. If you want to change it back to background layer um, or lock it, you can lock there. You can change it back to a background by going layer, new, background from layer, and it converts it back to background. To add a new layer, there's, there's multiple ways to do everything. So when I'm showing you a particular way to do something in this in the screen, just know that there are probably you know 10 to 15 other ways that you can do this through shortcuts and things, but I'm just showing you one way to do it. So you can click on this button down here next to the garbage, and that will give you a new layer. Okay. Um, you can also do a drop down or list arrow, it's called. If you do the list arrow on the layer, layers panel, you can do a new layer. You can go up here to Layer, New, and add a new layer. So there's lots of ways to do that. But now when you see with the layers um, that they stack on top of each other. And I'm going to add one more just so you can see. And so if I wanted to go ahead and let's say I just wanted to paint this layer. And I'm just going to give it a color. Let's just say we want to do, we'll try the blue color. We're going to drop the layer in there. And then I want to go to this layer. See, I can't see what's on that layer. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle it, clicking this eye off. It turns off that top layer, so now we can see below it. And let's say I wanted to give this a, I don't know, let's do pink. So we drop in a pink color. And again, see I can't see the white because the pink layer is in the way. So each of these layers are stacked on top of each other. To be able to see what's going on with the layer, you need to um, toggle it, turn it off, or you, need to, you can grab the layers and move them around, put them in different orders. Um, so just know that they stack on top of each other, and so if you aren't seeing something, it's probably because it's being hidden by the layer on top of it. If you're going to work with a particular layer, you can see that I'm clicked on the blue layer right now. So that's the layer that I would be working on. So if I try to do something, let's say I try to move this, nothing happens. You can see it's moving in the blue layer because that's the layer that I'm on. But if I want to move the pink layer, I have to click on the pink layer and then be able to move it from there. And again, because I don't have it locked, I'm able to make any adjustments that I want to with this layer. If I make a move and I want that to stay there, and I don't want anybody to make an alteration to it, I'm going to go ahead and lock it. One other thing I'm going to tell you is if you make a mistake, go ahead and just go File, or excuse me, Edit, Step Backwards. Okay, so Edit, Step Backwards, undoes any mistake that you made, and is kind of your savior. So if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. just edit, step backwards. Okay, and then um, the, one of the last things I'm going to tell you is when you're saving your, your files,
go to File, Save As, and just save it as a Photoshop. So we're just going to call this one Testing. And I'm saving it on my desktop. Save it. It's a Photoshop. Now I can open it back up. If I want to go in and make some changes, I can just open this particular file up and go back in and make changes. If I want to, to what they call destroy pixels, I go ahead and do File, Save As, and I can save it as um, a lot of different things, but in, typically what I have my students save it is as a JPEG because that's what we are um, able to load into our blogs easily and it's easy for them to understand. So I just save it as a JPEG. The key thing is when you're saving it, make sure if you have a, an image that you pulled up that you've changed the name so that you don't save an image on top of an image and destroy the, the original image that you're using. So in this case, I don't have another image called testing, but if I'd opened up an image and was saving over the top of it, I want to make sure that it did not save over the top of my original image or picture. So saving it as a JPEG. And then that way I can go ahead and open it and insert the JPEG into my blog or into my web page or whatever it is that I'm using. And that's just some simple things about using Photoshop. There's a lot more to, um, to it, but this is just getting started, knowing your toolbar, knowing layers, how to open up panels under window, and then how to save. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later.